Hello guys, and welcome back to a new chapter of how to. In this chapter, we're gonna be seeing two things in specific. First one, the serial node. I know that we will be approaching in this chapter, plus what we are going to focus the most on this section is how to create our own uh, patterns for our materials. Especially when we talk about ornaments, I wanna give you, you know, this kind of uh, tips and tricks, let's say in order for you to create to go from something like this for example to something like this and everything is tiling and it's correctly done so let's start with the basics so first off let me be clear uh, the shapes i'm using in this specific uh, pattern are for an environment i'm working on that is based on wolfenstein art so i'm doing a german bath uh, for for the German side, so basically that's why we have some iconography you will be able to recognize really easy. Now, what I want you to do first is okay, uh, get the icon right. So instead of doing it myself, I just saved some work, went to Google, Google One, and used Photoshop to create my mask. And in order to get it right, I just invert it, blur it, and I did a histogram scarf to get sharp edges. Now, before going on with uh, this in particular, let's go to the sphere part. In this part, I knew that I wanted to have like different steps of detail, and then I wanted to use the curve node in order to add more detail to it. So what I did was first I create my base shape, yes, a big shape, then I blur it, and then I use my sphere grayscale. Now the sphere grayscale, what it will do is gonna warp your 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 shape in a way now in a tornado looking way yes and it's gonna depend on the amount of strength we add we have the the exposed parameter here or the size we want to apply you know if you want to do it bigger or smaller and as you can see here like this is completely procedural so as you can see I have changed completely this and things are still tiling. Of course, this part here does not make sense because it wasn't made for that. But it's a good example to show you how it actually works and what kind of shapes you can achieve. So, after doing this, what they did was I copied exactly the same and did it thinner. Yeah, so we went from this to this, so we can achieve this. Remember, when working with these kinds of shapes and especially if you want to work with, you know, the curve node don't don't set your subsurface too high because we don't want this to be completely black we want just to be a little bit gray so we have space for later yes so with this level i kind of you know i, I maintained my gradient in my blur but i had a more like defined shape you see you can see from here to here there's this kind of blur here or gradient that we don't have anymore but if we get down here we can see we still have this gradient that will work perfectly with our curve node as you're seeing so in this case just one point and I started playing with it and basically that did all the work so before moving on to this second part what I'm gonna do is show you what I did with my uh, icon so what I did with my icon was basically I create a circle, yes, just to make like my base shape for my edge and a smaller one to distract it. So basically if if I start playing with it, this one is gonna change as well as you can see here. Okay, so after that what I choose to do was I lower the scale but I didn't touch the tiling yet. I knew it wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna tile inside my image. Like if I press uh, space on my 2D viewer, I can see this image. But I, I don't. In my square, in my main image, I don't have anything else but by shape. So I repeat the process we did with our swirl with my icon. After making it smaller, I just make made a blur and a histogram scan to maintain procedurality as you can see I changed these uh, the inner circle yes the, the sorry the edge of my shape and despite that everything uh, stayed as usual or as it should have been 
and that's because I have these two nodes that maintain what we have done before in a more precise way and I can lower this in order to create more detail as you can see but we're not gonna cheap that much in this case I believe I'm just gonna make this a little bit more nicer yeah that's right so we have these details and we go over again the same thing we blur curve and then I transform to make it smaller but in this time I change this and it's the tiling mode in case you haven't seen it before all your nodes have in here your base parameters and most of them are just by default in relative to parent now in this specific case we have this in 8 bits and pixel ratio square plus a tiling mode on horizontal and vertical so you can click on this one yes the inheritance and you can change it from relative to input to absolute so that's just gonna be so if I start to scale this down yes you will see that things start to uh, tile as they should but I can change it to no tiling only horizontal or just vertical in this case I sought it to no tiling because I didn't want anything weird uh, it wasn't actually really necessary but it's just me being me so here I did a little bit of place to make things a little bit easier for me uh, the main curve shape in order to make it uh, smaller and have like kind of really good uh, tiling I use a safe transform node yes so I use the same transform node and tile it by free as you can see here and then I made space for my icon yes so I made a circle I move it to the place exactly the place where I want it to be I shrink it down and then I add my shape here now in order to when, when we are seeing this we would we actually really don't want this so in order to make it easier for us I just use a shape and a blend to multiply and take only this part yes so we keep this line specific and I plug this into a tile sample now Watch out when you tile, uh, plug it here, yes, you can change these parameters, try them to be like exactly always the same. But bear in mind that it's going to change uh, the shape or the size of what you are building. Therefore, you will need to readjust the size of your, of your initial shape, but you can do it just right here. Yes, you have the scale, you can do it right here there's no need to do it before you can do it from here that's why I'm choosing this one in specific to the style sample in order to to make it work now when you reach to this point you have already created the pattern as you wish to so I'm just gonna throw you some quick uh, tips on how we can actually improve this better for our uh, material and um, this is how we are gonna apply this now in this case in the specific I didn't do this as like a sticker yes uh, you're gonna see you, you're gonna see it soon in my in, I'm environment art uh, how I create a, a tile wall for bathrooms and it has you know the iconography of the World War II German side so you will see that they are like kind of paints on top of the tile this is not in order to be painted it's more like ornaments so we want it to we want it to be like believable so what we do is from our final pattern yes in this case is this one we get a histogram scam and we get a mask the best mask we can get yes and after that we blur that mask yes because we want to have this kind of gradient here we want you don't want the we don't what we're going about to do we want it we don't want it to be sharp we want to be a little bit you know like have small gradient on top and what we're doing basically we are subtracting that to our main shape so let's say this is a wall yes this white square is a wall and we want to add uh, this to to our wall but instead of being put on top of our wall it has been carved in well this is a, a way of doing it that is by having the mask blurring a little bit so you don't have sharp edges and then you use a height blend yes in order to to add this to our material now bear in mind two things yes two things in particular actually 
When using the high blend, always use the contrast on 1. Don't leave it at 0.9. Yes, uh, in this case in particular, you won't see any kind of like change, but when you are working with other elements, like for example leaves, uh, rocks, and so on, having the contrast on 1 is gonna really be life saving. So after that, what I did was just take this mask, add it to our metallic, uh, add some detail to my roughness. And finally, a color I have already prepared for what I have created. Of course, as you can see, this is not a finished work. This is just an example of how you can create your own patterns for Substance Designer. And they can be ornamental or you can actually just change everything to be, um, to be more flat for a kind of a paint. So this is as far as we are going to get with this, we are not trying to make something like super specific realistic or a specific material, I just wanted to show you how to use the serial node and how you can approach when creating you know, your specific patterns, uh, it doesn't have to be any specific like ornaments as I did in this case, you can just do it with any kind of patterns, I'm gonna do more patterns in the future, believe me, but I hope this was uh, useful for you. And I hope I can see you again, so leave a like and subscribe.